Roll on it, people. We're here with the Total Human Optimization Podcast. What is going on? And my friend, John Wolf, oh. <laughs> head trainer, <laughs> captain of the ship at the Honored Academy. How are you, my friend? Oh, man, I'm doing great. It's an honor to be here. It's been a, a wild ride since I've been out here in Austin with the Honored team. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of work, and a lot of excitement coming up. Yep. So for those of you who have no idea who this gentleman is, um, John Wolf is someone that is an expert in unconventional training and has come out here and is going to head up our new on an Academy gym that we've been talking about with, uh, with Joe DeFranco and kind of lead a lot of the methodologies and, and training that we're going to be providing through the on an Academy, as well as doing some dirty hands-on painful but helpful myofascial and kind of body mechanic reconstruction work which i've been personally a uh, victim of <laughs> several times but it's been amazing and actually rogan was also uh, joe rogan was a victim <laughs> to some of those things <laughs> you gave him you gave him the full two and a half hour feature epic film version of the of the workout in myofascial when he was out as well oh man that was that was a blast to hang out with joe and uh just get to know him as a person as well as work with him for that two and a half hours i swear it felt like a 45 minute session man yeah you know? and then he woke up the next morning and said man john my ass hurts in ways that i've never <laughs> known possible hey how many times do you get that message john do you, you get know, that all the time is that, is that something usual no does your wife does no your wife <laughs> does your wife see that on your phone and she's like oh okay john again huh you know it's <laughs> it's more common than not you know, you know you know someone spends an hour with me and that's usually the outcome you know i get some weird text message the next day but you know it, it hurts but it feels good and you know, it, it's kind of like a guilty pleasure, I think, more than anything else mm -hmm. for me and them. You know, <laughs> I just, so, uh, Aubrey, you know, I've, I've had I got the, that hands on work with you a couple it's times. True. And, it's true. It's we've true. We've gone deep. Yeah, man. And, and get I'll in there. You, release some a, stuff. It's a release for you, but it's, it's like stress relief for me for some reason. I don't know. Maybe you're maybe you're a mean person, actually, John. <laughs> maybe all this, you know, it feels nice and it feels like you're healing, but maybe you just like inflicting that pain. Did you ever think about that? No, that's that's totally in my blind side. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, you see the smile right here. You know, I'm, I'm a nice person. Yeah, I, I just want to help. I know you do, John. I know you do. So take us through kind of um, you know how you got to where you are now. I mean, because you know, really. Um, in working with you, I've worked with trainers from a variety of different arenas, different styles, different methodologies, and, and you are a true master in every sense of the word. And I know every master will never admit that they're a master because we're always on the learning process. But I can say it because I'm not you, and I'm able to <laughs> identify it. Um, so, so take us through that kind of process to mastery because that's really you know a lot of what this podcast is about, and a lot of what this company is about is you know bringing out our potential so that we can unlock those unique gifts that we have to offer the world you know i've, I've been on a, a long journey here and you know i i think just like all of us you know we have to embrace all the steps uh down the down the road you know and so it's something i've told you a lot of times is you know my journey started when i was really young in martial arts and you know i, I cherish uh kind of someone who became a second father to me who's my martial arts instructor my sensei and and not only just because of the physical process that we went through in, in developing myself in martial arts but because of the mindset um, of a martial artist and that constant uh, want to develop yourself physically mentally spiritually and it's kind of been the guiding um, caveat for everything I've done since then and uh, you know I went through times in life where I was doing really good about things. I was on the straight and narrow, and then I spent plenty of time where I wasn't. And I think that, I think that's just called life, man. Man, I tell you about it, right? Anybody, you know? anybody who comes out of the shoot and just gets it right from the fucking start, I don't trust that motherfucker. <laughs> There's something wrong there. You know, and, and the thing about that is, and this is the human part. I think that 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 you're talking about is just life. That's just life, and to me, that created a huge sense of empathy. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I was really, in, in my darkest time, I was really down and out, you know. So right now I walk around about 200 pounds and, you know, I, 
I like to say it's mostly muscle, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, but at, at my darkest time, I was due to some down and out really bad. And I was down at 135 pounds and we'll just leave it to everybody's imagination. What got me in that state of body, state of mind, state of body that would get me Whoa. into that place. But, um, it was, a uh, uh, process some, from then some metabolism enhancers possibly. oh yeah yeah definitely uh -huh. definitely and, and for for a good year and a half that was that was the process but you know reason why i feel that this is such a, a huge part of my life is because i use the teachings of my martial arts background and a constant pursuit mm -hmm. of human optimization and trying to figure out these hacks, these ways to do things better than what everybody else was doing at the gym. You know, the, we're all trying to improve ourselves, but I just, I went into kind of thinking the like same way I did in high school, which was, you know, curls for the girls, hit the mm -hmm. bench, you know, the mirror muscles. And then I just looked around the gym and I was on this process and I said, man, you know, all these people, they've been doing the same routine for the last five years. And, and most of them are walking around, they haven't changed for the last four years. Mm -hmm. And they're also walking around and you can see the pain just in their bodies. And I was hurting, but I just thought, well, I don't want to end up. That don't, that's not my end game. And so I had to do a lot of research and figure out, well, what teachings do I want to subscribe to and where do I want to go in terms of my physical, mental, emotional development from there? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I think one one thing I want to touch on before we get into the, you know, the actual details of your training methods is the point you brought up about empathy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's really overlooked from a lot of people, you know, because that to me is the greatest motivating force in my life, period. You know, if I don't feel empathy for other people and there's periods where you know, maybe like a bunch of, I find a new page dedicated to hating Aubrey Marcus. There's whole websites out there de de dedicated to people. I'll delete them, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm <creating> a, <laughs> Lando, once a yeah. week, I got to create one. <laughs> or, you know, or whatever it is, or maybe I'm just not feeling good myself, or I'm in pain, or there's a lot of reasons that my empathy will kind of shut down temporarily. You know, sometimes it's just because I'm in pain, or I'm afraid, and I don't care about anybody else when I'm in pain or afraid. That's just kind of the animal response, you know, when you're hurting and you're, scared or things are going wrong you just kind of close in fuck everybody you know i gotta take care of myself yeah. and then other times it's when you you know when i feel like man i'm putting all this out there and nobody cares oh, fuck everybody you know so there'll be these periods like that and when i feel those periods my motivation just goes to shit because then i'm like what the hell am i doing what the hell am i here for anyways that hurts man yeah you know, you know it's like out. why what am i what am i fighting for you know and then so it's really identifying that a key for me is having that empathy, you know, really like looking at someone being like, man, I really want to help you out. Like, I feel your situation. I feel yeah. your fatigue and your pain and your fear and all the things that are going on. And let's let's fix that. And I think for a trainer, someone who's, you know, you're kind of doing this in a hands on way with everybody. I mean, trainers are part <laughs> part psychiatrist and part and part you know actual body trainer and things but especially the way that you do it with the way that you're un unlocking different capabilities of the body so important to have that empathy so you're not just pushing people through to to points of additional pain and yeah. not caring or judging them being like look at you you fat slob you know like i'm gonna make you suffer yeah. you know like like pouring salt on a slug like you're going to sweat to your puke because you don't really care about that person. So, you know, having that empathy is just, it's huge. That's been the biggest differentiating factor, if anything. You know, that I've trained with a lot of people, like a lot of people that are masterful at what they do. And you can kind of think about the analogy of the, the young teacher versus the tenured teacher. You know, sometimes the, the tenured teacher, they have all this knowledge. They don't, but if they've done it for a long time and if they lost that passion, they felt like how you described feeling like they're not connecting with people over a longer period of time. Maybe it's administrative issues or whatever the case is. These external influences, they lost the passion and the connectivity and the empathy for their students and their efficacy is, is non-existent, mm -hmm. non-existent. And, you know, you know, I think we all as humans go through that same process of, you know, wow, I'm feeling disconnected. And, you know, I'm just really lucky to have found some myself in a position where I'm constantly connecting with people. And, you know, if I can make somebody feel like they accomplished something they couldn't 
before the hour started or if I can help them walk out of the room feeling better about themselves, feeling better in their body, then, you know, I get to feel great about my work myself. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a really, it's a really unique job, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's a really unique thing to be here amongst people that all kind of feel the same way. That's, I think that's what's great about the culture here at Onnit is, that, you know, you have a lot of these people who are there and they're trying to connect with our, our customers, with each other, and, you know, you, you driving the boat, so. Trying, know. trying. So um, when you talk about, you know, when you talk about looking around and saying, you know, maybe the traditional training methods aren't working mm -hmm. and then trying to reanalyze what might work better. You know, what is uh, what are some of the things that you discovered that you're going to obviously be forming the foundation for your training? Well, you know, uh, I did a lot of research. I was doing the kind of went in the conventional certification model and I found that it was really, you know, bodybuilder influence or very mechanical in its approach. And so, you know, I just kept on doing research and I came across this magazine and, was, uh, and I was reading reading articles in this magazine and I saw this article from this Russian cat named Pavel and I was like it's kind of humorous you know interjections in the, in, in the article but it was really cut and dry and it was like this balance of old school old school methodology and kind of you know cutting edge science and you know practical application and i think that's something that most people like miss out on is that you know this is just what work sometimes you don't necessarily need to explain it with you know uh anything other than the fact that it's worked over a long period of time with lots of people and, right. you know and sometimes you just have to have enough faith to try it and have that experience for yourself so i did and i found some of his uh pavel's works and i started incorporating uh, a lot of that information and I found that wow this was a really great gateway for me to open my mind because um, in some of the stuff he did there's things that that I still practice so I first got introduced to joint mobility through him through heavy uh, deadlift training and you know maybe even like a loaded decompression type of theories that have evolved through you know from the time that I initially got exposed through his works and then constantly reinforced through a multitude of other teachers you know and it's it's been a great process because like you said you know I will never call myself a master but I am the consummate student and you know the reason um, you know when I, I took the position here I put a, a Facebook post out there and I really want people to, to know that you know yeah I'm, I'm taking this awesome position and it's, it's somewhat of an elevated position in the strata of the of the fitness industry you know to be in this position and make this impact but you know the only things I, I promised was that uh, I've always been a student and a teacher and I can only in that order continue to make that promise I will mm -hmm. still be a student then a teacher you know yep. and um, and so I just kept on consuming information uh, kettlebells came in studied kettlebells um, found some other uh, methodologies that had Russian influence as well, you know, like Russian Sambo influence and this unconventional training methodology, really weird looking movements for most people, you know, uh -huh. and uh, went through that, started swinging clubs, uh, got introduced to gear voice board uh, with, uh, with uh, Fedorenko when he brought that into the U.S., uh, trained with people that you know, still big names in the industry, Maxwell Martone, Steve Cotter, Pavel, you know, um, every, all those people, you know, at the seed of what is now what we call unconventional training, you know, back in 2002, it was just like this thing was just blossoming from, from a seed, you know, it's like bamboo, it's just been underneath the surface and all of a sudden it just shot out. And all these people have sprouted out and created their own systems, methodologies and, and, and organizations. and and it's it's a uh, it's been a really interesting situation to see all these people that have influenced me in some way um, continue to do that, and then find myself here and be able to do that too. You know, when you when you're talking about this, it's and I think one of the reasons why you're such a great fit is that <coughs> part of what on it is about is taking the best resources. And part of what what I'm about in general is taking the best information and knowledge, and without any ego or any fixed idea of how something should be just assimilating it and choosing what would work well together and which pieces to take you know kind of like uh 
I have a good friend, Daniele Bellelli, and he writes a book called Create Your Own Religion. <laughs> and he talks about all the all the religions of the world. And he's like, yeah, this part of this one's pretty good. So, you know, maybe you'd want to keep that part and maybe this part's pretty good. And, but people send, you know, they get almost religious about their training style as well as about their nutrition style. You know, people have these rigid guidelines which they want to defend to the death, mm-hmm. you know, and say, this is the only way and this is the way you have to do. Well, what if I'm different than you? You yeah. know, then that doesn't, necessarily apply you know and so i think what on it is about is just taking the best resources and figuring out what works not having some preconceived notion and that's you know seems to be how you've developed your you know kind of mindset in uh in your training styles and i know it firsthand i mean we've gone through workouts where it's just straight up body weight i'm dripping sweat and doing what seems like kind of like a a yoga progression almost to doing a full-on GS kettlebell sport workout that we went through yesterday to swinging clubs and maces to, you know, doing all kinds of different ways. And, and of course, accommodating what DeFranco is going to bring, which is no issue for you. You know, that's another master trainer that, you know, fits right in. It's functional. It works. You know, it has its own, own method. So I think that's such a strength when you don't have anything to defend. You're like water and can just kind of receive and move and push out the stuff that doesn't work, but accommodate all this knowledge that comes in. Man, that's that's really my goal, you know, and, you know, to take things at face value and, and to look a little bit deeper sometimes and make sure I uncover. There's always those hidden gems, you know. I think that sometimes people, they get stuck on, like you said, defending something blindly without – without even trying to examine deeper uh, uh, what's going on right in front of them, you know, and, you know, something that I remember realizing when I was younger was, you know, you can get lessons, uh, valuable life lessons from everywhere. You know, it's kind of like that Taoist type of philosophy. Like you look at the little, the water, the way the water drips off the the leaf and all of a sudden you you get this Uh huge epiphany, you know, and, and, um, I just realized, you know, that helps when you're on mushrooms, actually, (laughs) when you look, when water's (laughs) dripping off a leaf and you get a huge epiphany, you might have been on mushrooms accidentally, even because because that usually doesn't happen when you're sober. (laughs) Well, you know, I, I, no comment, (laughs) no comment at all. Um, but you know, (laughs) on the human level, you know, you know, say, say like kids, you know, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I remember, uh, growing up and a lot of kids are, the, the parents would tell them something. And you know, my peers at the time, the parents tell us, what do you know? You don't have any money. You're not wealthy. You're not. Th-. And then, then I just I just came to. If you ever find yourself in a position where you say, what do you know? You don't have any money. <laughs> just stop yourself right there. Stop. Sit down, meditate, go to a float <laughs> tank, take some ayahuasca, figure something out. Because that should never come out of your mouth. Yeah, you know, and that's kind of what I realized at the time, too, is like, man, you know, maybe they realize things as a result of the choices they made that they wouldn't want you to make as well. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, talking to, you know, I have an empathetic nature. So the, what I do is kind of like compounding what my, my natural, yeah. nat- you know, tendencies are. But but um, I just remember always like, I like to talk to people. So, you know, whether you're in a socially elevated position or whether you are asking me for a dollar, I'd rather still have a, I'll give you a dollar, but I'd rather have a conversation while I give you that dollar, you mm-hmm. know? And I, I've learned a lot from people who have nothing by the, you know, or have nothing to contribute by some societal standards, you know? And, and some of the deepest, you know, most pivotal lessons sometimes from those sources. So, um, you know, all these people who are teachers and they, they're obviously teaching people all over the world, they have something to offer and they have probably a lot of things to offer if you just take the time to listen and, and hear it out. You know, when Joe was here, it was such an eye opening experience. I, I, I'd have to say, you know, it's a little stressful. I'm like, man, Joe DeFranco is going to be here. You mm-hmm. know, I really, I'm curious how we're going to mesh because mm-hmm. we're going to be working together on this team. And, and it was beautiful because hearing Joe explain you know, his system, his methodology, tips that he's given on things that I don't use, like the bench press. I don't use the bench press very often. Mm-hmm. Um, but the alignments, the structural mechanics, uh, you know, all these things that he's doing, um, the, the little tweaks, I'm like, wow, yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. I just do it in a different drill or a different, different framework. And so when we had a longer conversation thereafter, and I got to have them uh, work with some clubs and some maces. Uh, we just found that we really were the, the same principles are, are guiding our actions. They're just 
we're using different avenues from that core method, core belief system, and and it's, it's really good. It's, it's such more, it's so much more powerful to find commonality than difference. I think. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So, all right. So, for for the listeners out there, um, what do you think are some of the most common things that you see that are that are issues that that people have? You know, when someone comes into you and says, you know, John, this is this is me. Take a look at me. What's going on here? What's wrong? And and what are what are some of the really common things that you see? And then what are your steps to go about fixing those? I mean, from a structural standpoint, I mean, you hear it a lot. This uh, upper or lower cross syndrome type of thing. Um, the, this is really just simplification of, of of that. Is you know your internally rotated upper body and usually uh, hip flexors are so tight that, that makes your pecs look big. Yeah, you John. gotta squeeze you know, the pecs you, for the. The more your shoulders are forward, <laughs> the more muscle is squeezed together on your titties, John. <laughs> Yeah, but you mean man. that's not the way it's supposed to be, bro? <laughs> yeah, well, when you're in front of the mirror, you know, and you're doing your GTL. <laughs> and, you ne- and you never look at the backside of your body. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't know. I must be really backwards because it's like well, everything on the backside of my body looks overdeveloped. <laughs> the front side of my body, I'm like, Doop. no. Um, Hopefully, that's not what she said. <laughs> oh, no. Well, you know, you can't see that part of the front side of my body. <laughs> and I don't want to, John. Yeah, well, How do you unconventionally train that? <laughs> there are weights designed I don't specifically know if you for this purpose. Unconventionally train that. I think, you want, I think you want conventional training for that. I mean, they can get weird with some unconventional training. Oh, man. All right. So, let, so, so going back to this internally rotated upper body what causes this why does everybody have it well you know it's that seated posture that most of us are we're we're in a society of knowledge workers so we're seated all the time we're not doing the type of manual labor we did 50 years ago as as a culture you know here in the u.s particularly we work with our brains so we're seated we're working on smaller and smaller little screens you know Mm -hmm. man kids are doing this all day long you know i haven't seen a kid actually throw a ball for like two years (laughs) you know (laughs) um and and so you know that compounds it shortens the the pec muscles the biceps you shorten and then that pulls on the anterior shoulder space which i mean i've seen so many people that that uh and and maybe you can 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 relate there you know Mm -hmm. that front of that shoulder is just a high point of tension and and um you know a little bicep release a little pec release a little trap release and all of a sudden hey you know if there's an acute issue it's probably still there but you know there's there's a lot less of an issue there and you know it's just getting things in the right position because strength is is positionally dependent you know i tell people all the time you know, don't worry about just pushing the you know the weight don't worry about moving the weight worry about getting in a good position maintaining your position and and the integrity of that position strengthening the integrity of that position and i think that that that's something that we we definitely want to spend a good amount of time on is just educating people about that yeah so you know in in addition to all the lifestyle things that cause that internal rotation i think overdevelopment of the chest in general is is an issue and that was an issue that i had you know everybody likes that high bench press number you know i used to i used to look at combine stats from the nfl and i'd have you know (coughs) hypothetically and theoretically i might have had an ex-girlfriend that continued to date nfl players as soon as we would break up so hypothetically i would look at their combine stats like a crazy person in college and try and out bench them hypothetically like that's a theory that may or may not have happened never happened (laughs) but but you know anyway it's just an example of like yeah that's the man measurement you know what do you what do you bench press what do you bench man and then it's also the thing that you're looking in the mirror it's that first flex you know that big pec flex and so just over developing the chest you know, which really doesn't serve a great functional purpose. You know, I mean, you need to have like a reasonably strong chest, but really most of your real world strength comes from your shoulders, your back, your other power systems. And really, you know, particularly through the time that we've been training together since you've been here, um, you know, we do some push up type stuff and some, you know, like the GS workout, a lot of kind of shoulder press and jerk and things like that. But I haven't noticed my real world power dropping at all. You know, I'm sure maybe my bench power has dropped but my real world strength and anything from you know hitting the bag hitting the mitts to hitting a ball to throwing a ball to any kind of wrestling to any kind of actual power measurement if anything has gone up even though i'm not heavily working the chest and what i've felt is that 
you know, I'm able to kind of taking some tension off my shoulders, like everything is starting to feel better because I'm not overtraining one direction versus the other. And, and the same, you know, on my legs with, you know, quads versus hamstrings, you know, focusing a lot on developing that hamstring strength to balance out the, uh, the quad strength. Yeah, I mean, you're an explosive athlete. So, you know, power athlete, probably more often than not, you know, from, from an athletic standpoint, quad dominant. So, mm -hmm. you know, you want to be on your toes. You want to have that drive forward. I mean, I've seen you swing some uh, some uh, kendo sticks out there, dude. You know, you're, you're, you're no joke. You're always driving forward, it seems, yeah. you know. Yeah, but yeah. Um, and, and, and not to mention in business and in life, you have that that mindset of driving forward so you know it's not something that you, i think that we can look at these movement patterns and like you said these these there's a lot of influencers and not just maybe not even just movement influencers but mindset and psychology you, you i don't think anybody's ever caught you on your heels <laughs> you'd be surprised maybe that, NFL, maybe that nfl player <laughs> that uh out benched you i don't yeah, know <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that that girlfriend had me on my heels for about four years oh man <laughs> that was bad everybody has one of those you know uh, yeah they catch you off guard you know they get you they, Valuable teachers. I'm, just, I'm married. Blind. Let's just call them valuable <laughs> teachers. <laughs> valuable teachers. Um, so yeah. So okay. So when you're noticing these these imbalances like that, so there's it's a combination of release and then also retraining and re kind of working different things. I know all we spend quite a bit of time doing different drills and exercises, trying to lengthen and strengthen different aspects of. Um, the muscles on the opposite side. Yeah, yeah, and just training a, a posture, like postural positions in a relaxed state. And I think that's something we were just working on not too long ago. It's like, hey, you know what? Sometimes it's not a strength deficit. Sometimes it's just setting a positional awareness for your nervous system mm -hmm. to be, learn to relax in a particular position so that you can walk away from that and not think, oh, shoulders back, down, tension, you know, mm -hmm. military type of focus. It just just should hang and be relaxed and be natural. Yeah, you mentioned that your shoulder should hang like a like a coat on a hanger. Yeah, you just kind of like relaxed. Relaxed. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you if you're relaxed, you know, if you want to be in a state of relaxation, things should be relaxed. You know, uh, things people um, people don't realize like tension is a is a function of a conscious choice. You know, you might not have that choice at this point in time, but you've had it throughout the time that you've been alive. So you, you built up a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that tension has uh, baggage in, you know, uh, attached to it, emotional, sure. psychological. Um, you know, you start releasing some of this stuff. I mean, say we integrate yoga movements into this holistic system of, of movement and training. And, and uh, you know, you have somebody in a new position or in a position they're not comfortable with, and they, they have a you know, emotional, psychological response. You know, sometimes, you know, you get a, someone to release some, some tissues that have been storing a lot of tension and, t and trauma, you know, emotional trauma, they, they might let out a couple of tears or a whole bunch of tears. And not because of physical pain, but just because it, you know, I, I remember I had a, have you ever had done rolfing? I have. Oh my gosh. When they released my jaw, my neck, is a place I store a lot of tension in my, the curve of my neck. I could just feel it release into the, into the table behind me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I just, I, so I let out some tears. And I was just like, be not because of the pain, which was pretty significant, but because I just didn't realize that I had this, I was carrying this around with me yeah, and that was weight. holding me back. It's weighing me down. It's, it's, it's drawing energy, you know, from me and, and, uh, and just to see, it was just gone all of a sudden. And it just was like this beautiful moment. And it cried, you know, I cried. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, that's just great. And so. It's surprising, you know, people, people always discredit that connection between your emotions and your body, you know, the, the physical storm. Some people might say, oh, that sounds all woo woo. But you, know, you just, you feel it and you see it time and time again, where there's a connection between your thoughts and your physical form, you know. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I've felt it many times, not only from, um, you know, uh, there's been some body workers and different people who have got into s certain areas. And sometimes you laugh when it happens, yeah. like, you know, just this incredible feeling of lightness. And then other times it's like this big detoxing purge of this kind of both toxins, probably literally that have been stored in those tissues there that you're kind of allowing to 
re-enter circulation but with those toxins those kind of psychological emotional things that get released i remember we were going deep into into my hip joints and it was like a pretty serious two-day detox for me after that you was know? your butt sore after <laughs> no, I haven't gotten to that state yet. And I'm hoping to stay away from that with you. But I like how you jump back there immediately. John. We got to tie it all together. Yeah, yeah, bringing it, bringing it back like a real radio professional. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that's that's super important. So end result of this kind of holistic training, and then of course you know in addition to all of this kind of softer yin work that you know is getting your body right. Um, you put people through some savage fucking workouts too. I mean, the, oh. you can't you can't miss out on that component as well. You know, the woo woo's interlaced with all <laughs> the uh, you know the very uh, the yang of the training. You know, uh -huh. I think that that's something that that we're talking about. People have goals, you know, and people have desired outcomes. And you said it yourself. If if you notice, you're like, man, John, you're doing all this stuff. You're stretching me out and. Uh, I feel good, but I feel weak. I feel incapable of doing the things that I like to do. Mm -hmm. You're not going to continue down that path. You know, the, the theory is we're trying to get you in better positions so you can be more effective using less energy, get the better, get the same outcomes or better. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still early on in this process. And, um, you know, and I think that that's, that's something you have to deliver on. And, you know, if somebody thinks we're, you know, we're talking about this and it's a little too woo-woo, I invite them to come in and train. <laughs> come in and train. Uh-oh, the John Wolf Challenge. Here it is, folks. <laughs> you are now cordially invited to come in and fucking train, says John. <laughs> hey, you know, we're going to have a good time. I'll be empathetic. We're going to, we're going to, well, you know, your butt might be sore after, but, but, you know, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to have you have or you're going to have an experience where you're going to be able to walk away and have a deeper understanding of what you might want to continue working on from that holistic standpoint. You know, the big thing about it is without a guide, it's kind of like going up a, a mountain you've never been up. You don't know where the the, the cliff kind of has a sheer edge or where this, you know, this person broke their ankle because they accidentally stepped in this pothole over here. Right. And and that's that's all. Uh, all I'm here for is to help people Fitness get up there. Fitness Sherpa. Yeah. Hey, what's up with the Sherpas around here, man? I've heard that <laughs> term quite a few times. I don't know. It's trendy. You know, I don't know. <laughs> Hips, hipsters like to use it, I think. Right, Orlando? I don't know. I don't know. You hang out. Are you, you our resident hipster? No, Orlando? he's not no, a hipster, I'm but he hangs out around. Soft around here. <laughs> <laughs> you hang out in the same areas. You know, you cohabitate with them all the time. What do you mean? I just got to stay in there and make sure. I'll keep my eye on them, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, if I start seeing you grow a brewer's beard or something like that, then I'll know. Yeah, Mine is a rockabilly, actually. Oh, really? Like a, it's like I'm a different. an ex-rockabilly, actually. An ex-rockabilly. What? <laughs> Once a rockabilly, always a rockabilly. <laughs> oh, I mean? do have that thing here. <laughs> he has a giant <laughs> tattoo on his arm that says rockabilly. <laughs> <laughs> Until you X that out. <laughs> I'm not drinking a, Pabst Ribbons anymore. Is, I'm drinking a, hemp for shit. It is now. a cat <laughs> with, a, with a curly Q mohawk, and it says rockabilly, okay? I don't think you can cover that up. <laughs> nah, I don't think so. Uh, it's part of you for life. um so yeah so basically look the end result of all of this stuff and and taking this holistic approach is fewer injuries your body feels healthier you feel like you got more energy um and your power and performance is just increased i know you right now you're working with andrew craig and you're going to start his strength and conditioning leading up to his next fight and i'm fucking stoked to see you know what that result's going to be because i can see his you know, all, you know, you're working on his flexibility, his power, his endurance, his, you know, myofascial, like his joint mobility, all of these things that are going to keep him healthy through training camp and increase his kind of power output, his ability to, to use his body in effective ways, both on the ground and with kicks and, and all that hip work that you're doing. You know, so really targeting that for his goals and, and whatever people's fitness goals may be. Maybe it's going to be lose 20, 25 pounds, 50 pounds, whatever five pounds maybe it's going to be you know get really s stronger more powerful for their ymca basketball i don't know whatever whatever the goal is you know co-ed frisbee golf <laughs> like, like whatever you know we can tailor the goals to meet that you know because the system is flexible and it's designed to be sustainable something that you can carry on you know into your fucking 70s yeah it's fitness for the rest of your life man you know and and the, th the truth of the matter is, so, you know, Andrew, he's an awesome athlete. You know, it's a great honor to be able to work with athletes of his caliber. 
And, you know, at the same time, we were able to find plenty of things to work on and improve. And I, I'm eager to see how that translates into his game. He's mm-hmm. been he's been fired up and pumped. I'm you know have him coming in later on today, as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. But at the at the same time, you know you don't have to be an elite athlete. You can be stay at home mom. You can be whatever. And like you said, the system is ultimately flexible because it's it's all about incremental progression and it's all about maintaining a sense of awareness of yourself. So you know a lot of times people they become less and less sensitive to what's going on in their body. You know, as a function of you know pushing themselves further into, you know, whatever they want to achieve with high school football mm-hmm. or whatever the case is, and at a certain point in our lives, you know, it usually happens somewhere around the time when you're you're thirty, which I don't even know if you are you thirty yet. Are yeah, thirty three. Dang, yeah. double double, double threes. Got, I got uh, gray hairs coming. Out <laughs> I got. I think I have you up on that. Yeah, I got quite a few <laughs> of those things, um, but. You know, at a certain point in time, you just realize, you know, like you, we've made sacrifices to get certain outcomes. And, and then, you know, the technology to to get those outcomes, those positive outcomes, those desired outcomes, without making those huge sacrifices become more and more important. And mm-hmm. then you say, you know, whether you're a housewife or whether you're a professional MMA athlete, it becomes longevity starts to be one of the most important things. Um, can you know, the, with a lot of the clients I had in my other studio in, in Central Coast, California, we don't have a huge market for elite athletes in Monterey, California. So a lot of my clients were housewives or or older uh, gentlemen that were kind of nearing retirement age or whatever the case is. And the big thing is like, hey, how long? Because you're the, these are the people usually taking care of everybody else around. Them, mm-hmm. you know, the, and this is the one hour they invest in themselves you know, to take care of themselves. And the whole thing is you have to continue to invest in yourself. Otherwise you're not going to be the one taking care of everybody else. Mm-hmm. You're going to be the one getting taken care of. And I don't yeah. know about you, but you know, the one time I, I had to go to the hospital and I wasn't able to, to take care of myself. And I had people, that was probably like the worst situation I've ever had in my whole life. I just like broke down and, you know, I've talked about crying a lot here on your podcast, man. I don't know what's going on here, but yeah, I cried like sensitive. a baby that time, dude. <laughs> and, um, and it, it was it was just that realization that like wow I if there's there's a likelihood at some point in time in all of our lives we're going to be um, dependent upon people we love to take care of us at some point some way maybe for a short period of time maybe for an extended period of time but if I can reduce that time to as close to none mm-hmm. then that's one of my biggest life goals and if I can help other people do that and then and at the same time increase their potential to have you know um, high output of uh, you know, sports for, uh, specific performance or just performance in life. Then yeah, just the, getting that just that energy to do to do that little extra to do a little bit more and whatever it is. You know, I mean, I know the days that I don't work out and I go home and I'm trying to you know do you know I have a another second kind of period of productivity usually at night. And if I haven't worked out though that day, you know, I'm be so much more likely to just you know, hit the tank, you know, like turn something on on the TV and just kind of phone it in. If I've got a good workout in and the oxygen's flowing, the blood's been circulating and I have that energy, I'm way more productive. And that's those, those are those extra hours that really separate, you know, what you're able to accomplish in in your day. And then the other thing is, is, you know, it's such a psychological bummer when you're injured. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're injured, when I'm injured, I'm not the same fucking dude. And that's something I need to work on probably. But it's to me that confidence in my physical expression, you know, as again, I mentioned Daniele Bellelli twice, but he says it's like having a wild wolf under your skin. What? You know, yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) You know, even when the mind is in doubt, the body provides tangible proof. You know, when you know that you can get there and, you know, rip a huge set of kettlebells or, you know, swing a rope for a. 80 repetitions and you know whatever whatever those things are when you know you can do that there's a kind of confidence that exudes through your body that's different and then when when i'm hurt you know if i hurt like a groin or especially some big thing like back or shoulder my shoulder i can kind of work around a little bit but some especially some of the bigger systems Mm -hmm. it's like i don't feel like the same dude you know i'm like oh i don't know what am i what am i i don't know i can't do that (laughs) you know And, and that's maybe a little bit extreme but it just staying healthy, you know, and like injuries are going to happen occasionally, but doing your best to minimize that so that you can be at, at your peak for longer. 
Yeah, and also reach higher peaks, right? Yeah. I mean, because yeah. every time you have an injury, you're in a valley, you know. You mm-hmm. have to climb back out of that valley just mm-hmm. to hit baseline, you know. And, uh, you know, the longer you stay out of those valleys, the longer the higher peaks you can climb. Amen to that. Lando, give us some questions, man. All right. We'll start off with uh, Caden Cockerell. And uh, this might be a little hard one for you to answer, John. Uh-oh. But what's your oh, challenge? Well, there's, there's, so the much. there's so much. Fucking slap uh, <laughs> him with your glove, Lando. Best favorite steel club exercise. Oh, it might, might be hard for you to choose that. Oh, That's yeah. um, and also how to get the most out of the lower weight steel clubs. Okay, so uh, the thing about steel clubs is they're insanely um, dynamic, and there's a, a wide range of potential for you to use them for mobility purposes for strength for power output but the 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 reality is is, uh, one of the things that you know you get with steel clubs because of a slim profile and uh, just the nature of the tool is a lot of lateral swinging motions that are really a lot harder to do with a kettlebell i mean you might see me do a lot of lateral motions with a kettlebell but you know if someone new you're likely to clip a shin or a knee so it's um that steel club, especially for somebody who's just learning fundamentals, that's a, a fundamental drill is lateral swinging motions with the steel club. And uh, and taking that, that lateral motion, say even if you shoulder, shoulder the club and look down the barrel off to the side and just do a basic squat, you just realize that you're adding all this rotational stability work. And a lot of the times what people don't realize is that I think that's what got Joe's butt. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> that, was the, that was the one. You were there. You yeah. remember. <laughs> but uh, it was just this insane amount of rotational stability going on at the hip and the in the spine. And and um, it didn't look like, you know, it doesn't have to look insanely sexy to get really, to be really effective. But those are fundamental components. And the the ultimate expression, especially with clubs, for me is just being able to transition from one drill to the next to the next. And I know Aubrey, Aubrey uh, you know, he's been really kind and he positions me really well. We had some visitors um, <laughs> at, here at uh, on at HQ, and like uh, I was walking by and, and he was showing them the steel clubs. So he's like, "Here, John, show them." <laughs> yeah, I was, you know, it's kind of like, you know, if, uh, you know just being able to transition from one movement to the next is the ultimate expression constantly moving constantly you know dynamically uh, creating a, a high uh, power output and then stabilizing in a in a position that might be a position of weakness for a lot of people you know and then translating that right back into motion in, in a new plane of uh, new direction that was one of the things that really you know got me fired up about the clubs it's not only the new ways that it was causing my body to move but the just the skill element and it still excites me you know i'd look at you and you know it's it is always it always must be fun i just you know realize that when someone asks you to demo something that you're really fucking good at (laughs) you know what i mean because then it's not you just showing off like hey watch me do this it's like oh Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, I'll, I'll do that because you asked. And then you just whip out something <laughs> incredible, you know. It's like, but, uh, but just the skill element of, of what you're able to do just from patterning that movement and getting the strength and the flexibility and the mobility and, and, and all of that that comes with it, um, it's just something to, to shoot for, you know. And, and you find that with, with all those implements like the clubs and the maces and particularly where you start something and you know maybe your 360 is pretty crappy you know at the start but then it gets better and better and same with the clubs the way that you're doing like a clockwork squad or the way that you do the mills and different things just always something to shoot for and improving and then finally when you know when you're getting to a really strong level you can just put everything together and it looks like you're a you know like a nunchuck master (laughs) you know you know it has like a real skill element that's awesome so who didn't want to be a ninja there. growing up? Yeah, oh. totally. Totally. Cool. And now, I don't know if this guy's part of your pack or not, but his name's Jeremy Wolf. <laughs> no, no, no relation. And, um, this, guy, well, this question is actually asked a lot on our Twitter and Facebook, um, so we'll see if we can give some advice on it. Um, what kind of footwear is optimal during training? Uh, I go barefoot as often as I possibly can. So um, a lot of what we do... Um, and a lot of what I'm trying to contribute to the, the academy curriculum is, is very dependent upon your ability to, to feel the ground, grab the ground with your feet, 
proprioceptively be aware of where your weight's distributed. And uh, footwear, by its very you know design and nature, they're all designed to do different things. So, uh, but ultimately, what they do is they separate your foot from the surface that you're training on. So, whether it's a um, a running shoe which is highly padded and has a heel lift and it's designed to help you shift your weight forward so you can continue running more efficient or with less impact on your heel or whether it's uh you know flip-flops you know it, it, they're there to to disengage you from the ground and in doing so that um you know in your hands and your feet you have these mechanoreceptors they, they're like nerves and 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 uh, elements of, of your body that are designed just to sense load and by dis that disassociation, wearing footwear or wearing gloves, you have one degree of separation between you and whatever element you're working with or against. And that reduces your time and uh, the ability to engage, you know, because it's autonomic for the most part. Your nervous system is sensing that load. It sends a signal to increase the, the sensory output, the output, the nervous system output, and fire off the muscles that need to uh, fire. John, you can't say load, fire <laughs> off, <laughs> <laughs> sensory input all together. Yeah. You reached capacity. I was, go oh, I was going with you until you said fire off. I'm giving her all I've got, <laughs> Captain. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I was just like, all right, I can, all right. I can keep it together. I can keep it. Oh, no, okay, no, firing no, off no. loads. <laughs> <laughs> well, in any case, less is more with footwear. Uh, yeah. There's times where you might have a benefit of wearing certain footwear. If you're doing Olympic lifts, you might want to have some weightlifting shoes. Or if you're doing GS, you might wear some weightlifting shoes for your advantage. But but if you can train barefoot, that's generally going to be the, the best advice I can give. Or Vibrams are probably some kind of compromise if the gym floor is nasty and you don't want to go barefoot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. At least, at least you can kind of spread your toes out a little bit and feel the ground a little better. I, I tend to train in those. Yeah, minimalist. Right? Minimalist. Less, less is more. Yeah. And uh, we'll do one last one. Um, this is a supplement question. Since we just uh, launched our total strength and performance, Aubrey, mm -hmm. um, Dan Carter 54 wants to know, I mean, uh, sorry, Derek Allen wants to know, um, you know, what could he expect to gain out of this product? What's the difference from uh, the previous T+. Plus? Um, yeah, that's basically his question. Well, from the previous T plus, we added <clears throat> a couple more elements. We really increased the BCAA content, so that's going to uh, generally replenish and refuel your muscles. Because because really, working out doesn't make you stronger. Working out makes you weaker. It actually breaks down the muscles. It's the recovery that makes you stronger. Um, so, if you're not getting enough things to recover in your muscles, then you know, you're not going to get stronger. If you're not sleeping, if you're not eating right, you're just going to continue to break down those muscles and you're not going to get stronger. So BCAAs are really great for that. Um, good healthy food sources will have them as well, but these particular amino acids are particularly useful for muscles. We also increased the, uh, the, the long jack in there as well, which is another really potent herb with a variety of different benefits and made a couple other tweaks, increased the glutamine. But the core of the formula is very much the same. And what we discovered when we tested on the Florida State University, um, the rugby team doing powerlifting lifts, is that the people who were taking that product got stronger 36% faster than the people who didn't. So they only took it for a month, but you extrapolate that. And, and so the total gains were, you know, it was like 8.5% versus 6%. But, you know, so because you're only going to gain in one month, you know, that's about as the m that's actually a pretty significant gain for a month. But for for either. But they were in a heavy lifting program. You're not going to gain 36 percent strength in a month. That's not possible. But gaining that faster, you know, over that amount of time, if you keep that going month after month after month, um, you're just going to see yourself improving against the competition, improving against what was normally going to be capable for yourself. And so you're going to be able to hit your goals faster, hit your gains faster, help your muscles recover faster. Um, you know, a lot of different compounds doing different things. Um, you know, we're continuing to study the hormone optimization element of the formula with a different patient group that isn't maxed to the gills with testosterone, being 21-year-old male powerlifters. Um, so continuing to study that. But, you know, a lot of the ingredients have great research on a variety of different methods from lactic acid buffering to muscle recovery to hormone balancing. Uh, so a really well-rounded formula for just increasing strength, 
increasing performance um, you know without any of the side effects and without the caffeine and all the other bullshit that your body has to to deal with to help you recover so I know it's a product that you know I've been really digging and, and enjoying in its current format and uh, you know I can totally feel a difference from when I take it and when I don't you know when uh <clears throat> before I came out here to Austin we uh, started carrying a lot of the honor products at, at the studio and T plus uh, the original formula which was not even as as potent as the current one right and uh, we had people that man I, I just can train so much more I like you know they, they would come in and then you have to cycle off of T plus every once in a while. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I I want I want to be back on because they just uh I've had people, especially uh, older males where they were talking about they're sleeping better because of the the optimization of their hormonal profile. Yeah. And you know, it's theoretic at this point. I don't have a study for that, but you know, these are just real world results from people in their, you know, uh mid to late thirties, forties, fifty year old guys. Um <clears throat> one guy he he said uh work too good he couldn't he couldn't keep <laughs> taking it and it had something to do with uh firing off loads <laughs> faster something of course, I don't, uh, something of course. Like that. <laughs> Just, <laughs> but no uh, uh, all jokes aside he, he said it was it was just so effective he could feel a huge shift in uh it was it's, that's great to be able to carry this type of products in your in your gym for sure product. for sure well i think that about does it um <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I'm going to be off again on another adventure, but we're going to be recording a bunch of podcasts. I don't know when we're going to release them, but um, we will get you guys covered for your Total Human op Optimization show while I'm gone. Keep it moving. Keep it rolling. John Wolf, thank you, my brother. Thank you so much for having me. For sure. And anybody, you know, we can find John at the Honored Academy, both literally if you come to Austin, Texas, and, uh, and online as well. Um, certainly reach out to him. We're putting out articles every day. Uh, you and Mark DeGrasse, are this dynamic duo yeah. of content and education production. So everything that's uh, everything that you guys are doing is loads of content. Is great. <laughs> loads, <laughs> loads of content. Loads of content. <laughs> so much content, your butt will be sore from sitting there reading it. So. <laughs> All right, my friends. Much love. Thank you, John. Thank you. Peace. Peace.